Hello everyone. Hope you have been keeping well, especially over in the Americas, where I believe there is a large snowstorm currently still ongoing. And the reason I mention that is obviously because it is the subject of today's video, so we may as well get right into it from CNN which is one of the places I thought wouldn't report on this very well, but here we are. Frozen wind turbines, limited gas supplies, and rolling blackouts behind Texas's energy woes. Yes, it appears that there are rolling blackouts currently going on in Texas for numerous reasons as to the energy resources being either frozen over or there's been limited supply of it for maybe other reasons than due to the weather. So, some of the warmest places in Texas where w rolling power outages are occurring across the chilly state are inside cars and trucks parked in the driveway of a home without electricity. Shay Louis of Irving told CNN his family in Grand Paris had planned a small socially distanced gathering to celebrate his younger brother's birthday, but instead of celebrating, they had spent the day trying to stay warm. They have been in the car all day with the heater on, he said. The inside of their home had dropped below 40 degrees. That is nuts. And if you're anything like me, you will be asking questions such as why the hell are there rolling blackouts going on in a first world country because of some bad weather? I also should point out to my European followers that 40 degrees there means 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And that translates to about 4 degrees Celsius. So not exactly livable conditions and especially strange for the inside of a home. So why was it under 4 degrees Celsius? Well, apparently rolling blackouts were ordered across Texas on Monday as a winter storm and frigid temperatures gripped the state and knocked out services for more than 4 million customers. The rotating outages could continue until the state's weather emergency ends, according to the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, a major grid operator that controls about 90% of the state's electric load. Socialism moo. Governor Greg Abbott said in a Twitter post that the state's power grid had not been compromised. So, essentially, they have to keep having blackouts, but the governor is saying, no, the power grid is still fine. I assume that means that the power lines aren't knocked down or anything like that. It just seems to be purely from the energy resources. And according to the CNN article, the resources were frozen wind turbines and limited gas supplies that have hampered the ability to generate enough power, according to the statement from the ERCOT. People in Houston, the fourth most populous city in the US, may be in the dark into Tuesday, according to Mayor Sylvester Turner. As of Monday afternoon, there were 1.2 million Centerpoint customers without power, including in the city of Houston and the Houston region, Turner said, a number that he could increase as the weather gets colder in the evening. Rotating blackouts occur when power companies cut off electricity to residential neighbourhoods and small businesses, typically for 10 to 45 minutes before being rotated to another location. ERCOT said, traffic lights and infrastructure may also lose power during these blackouts. So... Because they had limited energy supply or electricity supply specifically, it turns out that they had to just choose which areas were without power for 10 to 45 minutes. Though, from the sounds of this article, it was going on for a lot longer than 10 to 45 minutes because it implies that it's going on for hours if it's saying they will be in the dark into Tuesday. So, what do I know? It's quite confusing. So the CNN article waffles a bit on about the weather and storms and things like that. doesn't really get to the actual point of it all. It kind of just mentions the wind turbines. So we're going to move on to Dan Crenshaw, who I know is a neoconservative and generally not to be trusted. But from what I can tell, the things that he has put in this tweet thread is actually quite accurate when it comes to the facts. So he nicely summarises it. A mix of oversubsidized wind energy and underinvestment in gas power means we didn't have enough baseload energy for a massive spike in demand, which would tend to happen if everyone needs to put their heating on. Also, Texas infrastructure isn't designed for a once in a century freeze, which also makes sense, which I'll get onto it later. But there were people saying, oh, you don't know how to handle a bit of snow. God, you, you aren't good at anything, America. And obviously, if you don't have snow for a century, you are obviously not going to prepare for snow like we have seen in Texas over the past week. So number one, frozen wind turbines. West Texas had wind turbines that had to be de-iced. The little energy that power regulators planned on being supplied from wind is now gone. 
We have almost 31 gigawatts of wind installed on the grid, but Monday we couldn't even depend on 6 gigabytes working. And to make the matters worse, storage of wind energy in batteries was also gone, because the batteries were losing 60% of their energy in the cold. Bottom line, renewables don't work well in extreme weather, never mind. Well, I think using this one anecdote to state that is going a bit far. There are a lot better ways to say that wind turbines are terrible, and that I don't think is one of the good ones, but... Well, the point is, is that the wind turbines were supplying very little energy anyway, which were being oversubsidized, and even with that, it couldn't produce any because they were frozen over, and even then, the energy that was stored in batteries from the wind turbines lost 60% of their energy because it was freezing. So everything that could have gone wrong with wind turbines in cold weather did go wrong. There are of course probably ways to fix this, but there are also probably better ways to spend money when it comes to the energy sector in Texas. Number two. Nuclear also got too cold. We only have four nuclear units in Texas, near Houston and Dallas. One of the reactors near Houston turned off due to a safety sensor freezing. That's fine, at least they didn't Chernobyl. No problem with the reactor, but the lack of the sensor forced the plant to shut down as a precaution. On another note, this shows how safe nuclear is. Lots of safety precautions. Yes, exactly. In fact, there are so many that it becomes far too expensive to build in most countries. We don't have enough natural gas online, point number three. ERCOT planned on 67 gigawatts from natural gas and coal, but we could only get 43 gigawatts of it online. We didn't run out of natural gas, but we lost the ability to get it transported. Pipelines in Texas don't use cold insulation, so they froze. Every natural gas plant stayed online. The down plants were due to scheduled maintenance. Governor Abbott made the right call in diverting all natural gas to home heating, fuel, and then electricity for homes. Gas and coal bought a stable supply of energy, but still not enough. So there you go, that seems to be the whole story behind the Texas energy woes. Basically, wind turbines froze and the energy stored by wind turbines was lost due to the batteries freezing. The nuclear units had to shut down because of frozen sensors. And finally, supply of gas was stalled because trucks carrying the gas were probably frozen in place and the pipelines were also frozen so couldn't safely transport the gas. So really when it comes down to it, yes fossil fuels kind of save the day with this, but what seems to be the main issue is Texas not being ready for an ice wave that basically hit. Because why the hell would you? It's Texas. You don't exactly think of glaciers and snowy hills. But also there seems to be a big focus on getting wind power into Texas over the past decade or so. In this article from the Texan called Renewable Energy Booming in Texas as Oil and Gas's Struggles, they mention some of the figures. So according to the article, Life Powered, a project of the Texan Public Policy Foundation, reported in April of 2020 that federal subsidies for wind and solar power far outpace subsidies for oil and gas, coal and nuclear energies. Federal energy subsidies have left a legacy of distorted energy markets, a legacy that began with fossil fuel tax breaks and grew dramatically with the explosion of renewable energy subsidies in the past decade, said Life Powered's Brent Bennett. From 2010 through 2019, federal subsidies for renewables totaled $71.2 billion, compared to $25 billion for oil and gas, $15.4 billion for nuclear, and $12.8 billion for coal. Now, the coal one doesn't surprise me at all. That is being phased out because it's very, very dirty when it comes to comparing it to oil and gas. And also, we seem to have mined quite a lot of coal, but there's still quite a lot of oil and gas. That is a lot more economically sound to extract. And the 15.4 billion for nuclear, I have no idea why you wouldn't subsidise that more if you're going to subsidise. But the 71.2 billion for wind turbines to then have this storm in the middle of February, completely take out that $71.2 billion worth of subsidies? I don't see how that's worth it, but this is what Texas has had to deal with when it comes to their energy resources. So obviously after all this information came out, there was the standard, no you can't just blame renewables for this. Which on one hand, I agree with. This issue was absolutely down to the freak weather they had. It just so happened that in this time of emergency, the wind turbines could provide absolutely no help to the people when it came to their power supply. And obviously something like this simply cannot be predicted by the Texan government when they were subsidising wind energy. Now I'm against subsidies and syntaxes in general, 
because they do distort the market for no particular reason other than it fits with someone's morality. And I also do think that wind turbines are the least useful renewable energy source that you can invest in. But I still think just blaming wind turbines for this problem in Texas is not the way to go about it. Having said that, the people arguing that you shouldn't do that also have really silly arguments and ignore the whole context. So let's go through an article about it. No, frozen wind turbines aren't the main culprit for Texas's power outages. Lost wind power was expected to be a fraction of winter generation. All sources from natural gas to nuclear to coal to solar have struggled to generate power during the storm that has left millions in Texas in the dark. And that already misses the entire point. When people say wind turbines shouldn't be invested in and it is wind turbines fault for this, what they are really saying is that, well, the Texans have subsidised wind turbines in an effort to be more environmentally friendly. And the problem with this is, is that when it comes to an emergency, since they have not focused on the baseline of supplying energy, which is fossil fuels and nuclear power, it is meant that there is rolling blackouts and people who have to stay in their cars to warm up. So this article mainly gives the same information that Dan Crenshaw gave, and it even mentions him at one point and basically says, oh, he's wrong to just blame wind power, which if, as we read through the tweets, he didn't just blame wind power, but he did say we should probably invest in it, lest, which, again, I agree with. So then it gets to this point. Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller, known for his right-wing Facebook posts that have in the past spread misinformation and amplified conspiracy theories, also posted an unvarnished view of wind energy on Facebook. We should never build another wind turbine in Texas. <laughs> in another post, Miller was even more forthright, but also misleading. Insult added to injury. Those ugly wind turbines out there are among the main reason we are experiencing electricity blackouts, he wrote. Isn't that ironic? So much for the unsightly and unproductive energy-robbing Obama monuments. <laughs> At least they show us where idiots live. <laughs> that is quite funny. While wind power skeptics claim the week's freeze means wind power can't be relied upon, wind turbines like natural gas plants can be winterised or modified to operate during very low temperatures. Yes, and it appears that they're still mainly relying on natural gas anyway which by all means appears to rely on less government subsidies. So why not just have any subsidies at all and let natural gas plants get a bit winterized in Texas? For the, for the once every century winter storm that comes. Experts say that many of Texas power generators have not made those investments necessary to prevent disruptions to equipment since the state does not regularly experience extreme winter storms. Yes, and that makes perfect sense. And again, I want to make it clear, it doesn't appear that Miller is saying, oh, wind power is completely useless just because of this winter storm. He seems to be saying it's always been a waste of money. You know, he called it an Obama monument. <laughs> he probably also knows, as an agricultural commissioner, that a lot of Texan subsidies, a hell of a lot more than goes into other energy resources, gets put into wind energy and appears to be a massive waste of money because it just doesn't make the same amount of electricity as nuclear, gas, coal or oil. And I agree, let's move away from coal for a bit, let's get onto oil and gas, move off oil, move on to gas, and while all this is happening, create nuclear energy. It is extremely safe, and it is extremely efficient. We're getting to a point where we only need a few dotted around countries or states to provide power for everyone. But no, we need to invest in renewables like solar and wind, and while solar is a lot better than it used to be, Wind. Wind just needs to go. So while that is my opinion, we should now get on to the opinion of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who tweeted this not long after a bunch of people in Texas were left without power due to freezing energy sources. The infrastructure failures in Texas are quite literally what happens when you don't pursue a Green New Deal. Weak on sweeping next-gen public infrastructure investments, little focus on equality so communities are left behind, climate deniers in leadership so they don't long prep for a disaster. We need to help people now. Long term, we must realise these are the consequences of inaction. It's absolutely, it boggles the mind you could say this. So for those of you that don't know, the Green New Deal is the idea that we can essentially have economically green socialism. It demands huge investments into renewable energies, massive the funding of fossil fuels and nuclear energy for some reason. 
there's also random projects in it as well, I believe, like huge infrastructure changes, like a massive train line that spans America. But essentially, the main point of it is less fossil fuels, more renewables. So the fact she says that this is to blame because we don't have a Green New Deal is out of this world retarded. This is because we were subsidising, well, Texas was subsidising too much into renewables and not enough into coal, oil, well not coal, oil, gas and nuclear. As I said before, $71.2 billion went into wind, which apparently already they think only makes up a fraction of the energy produced for Texans. And then in place of an emergency, when they really need power, they are less than useless. And solar obviously wouldn't be much better either, as in a snowstorm there isn't much sunlight. So Ocasio-Cortez's claim that we need a Green New Deal to make sure that this never happens again is ridiculous. No, all Texans had to do was prepare for a winter storm that only comes once every century, which obviously would not be high on anyone's priority list. But hey, I guess this is why you should prepare for the worst. And she's not the only one being an idiot. Bloomberg Green, which I assume is Bloomberg's renewable energy section or whatever, they have an article saying Sweden shows Texas how to keep turbines going in icy weather. And I'm just going to read the first literal sentence because this is how stupid it is. With the right gear, wind turbines can keep on generating through the harshest winter weather. Yeah, idiot, we know that. How often does Texas get harsh winter weather? Once a century. That's why they weren't prepared for it. And the rest of it just goes through, oh, people are blaming wind turbines freezing through it, but it can keep going in the winter. Yeah, idiot, so can gas power stations. As I have been through, this happened because of an extreme weather event that no one expected in Texas. And having said that, I will just put in a quick funny article from this whole escapade because I, I just found this so funny. And honestly, this is just this whole escapade is just as simple as winter weather hit Texas. They weren't prepared for it. You know, you can't really fully blame renewables for it, but you can blame them for all the other reasons that I mentioned in this video, such as they're oversubsidized and while being oversubsidized, they still only produce a fraction of what Texas needs. So clearly there are better places for this money. But anyway, on to this funny article. Texas Snow, Mayor quits after only strong will survive post. Yes, it appears that we have gone full social Darwinism in a particular town in Texas. The mayor of a city in Texas has quit after posting that only the strong will survive and the weak will perish in a deadly winter storm sweeping the southern US state. Tim Boyd, the mayor of Colorado City in Texas, took to Facebook in anger at people crying and looking for a handout. Gee, how base do you want to get? Sink or swim, it's your choice, he raged. The city and country or any other service owes you nothing. <laughs> Depends if they paid for it. Millions are now in a third day without power and struggling for heat in Texas. More than 20 people have died across four southern states. Yes, this is uh, probably why it's a bad idea to express your rage onto a public forum like Facebook. Having said that, that is also hilarious. In his original post, now deleted, Mayor Boyd starts by saying, let me hurt some feelings while I have a minute. <laughs> Always a good start. He says, it is not local government's duty to support people through trying times, adding, I'm sick, I'm tired of people looking for a damn handout. Again, the libertarian in me is liking this, but I have to say the timing is terrible. Calling the situation the product of a socialist government, <laughs> he urges people to think outside the box and not wait for someone to come and rescue you. I, again, I I sympathise with the message, but after 20 people have died across four states in the south because of this winter weather, yeah, this isn't the time or place to do that. He adds, only the strong will survive and the weak will perish. Yeah, that, that is not that was probably the worst thing you could have ended it on. That is unbelievable. So he later apologised, which is wishy-washy, but he was fired anyway, so what was the point? Though, to be honest, I would I would probably think you should apologise for this. That is an awful thing to tweet, no matter how much I agree with it. But then it obviously goes too far. He also said his wife had been sacked over his comments and the family had received hateful messages. Yeah, that is obviously too far. This guy alone was being an idiot. Don't punish his family for it as well. It's not hard. But then the article goes through details of what we already know through this. So I thought I'd just end with some fun because this was a rather dry one. 
And there was actually a lot less information to give you than I thought. It was literally just power cuts everywhere, renewables hit harder by the winter weather. Basically, the winter weather is the only thing to blame for this, though it was also caused by central government giving out subsidies for renewables to make themselves look good. In short, I'd say don't do that. Invest in oil and gas and nuclear. And before you know it, we'll probably have fusion anyway, which will make them all irrelevant, assuming the price comes down. So if you are out there, don't just blame wind power for this. You have to make the argument a lot more nuanced. And there are much better examples of wind power being terrible, such as the amount of copper they use, the amount of energy that actually is input into making a wind turbine, as the power over its lifetime will only just make it a net positive. And then obviously it's all made of fiberglass and is really hard to recycle. So there you go, there are some quick ones if you are not brushed off on why wind power is terrible. But that's everything I had for you today. So, as usual, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.